Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Saturday, and welcome to day six of the Boys Town Pediatrics Virtual Newborn Expo. My name is Gabby, and I am here with Dr. Linda Fasali, who is a licensed psychologist at the Boys Town Center for Behavioral Health. So, Dr. Fasali, how are you doing today? I'm great, Gabby. How are you? I'm great. Well, thanks for joining us, especially on a Saturday to talk about this next topic. If you have not tuned into our previous Facebook Lives this week, we went live every single day, you know, Monday through tomorrow, Sunday on a different topic, helping you prepare for baby. So make sure to catch those videos on our Facebook page under the videos tab to get caught up. Okay, so like I mentioned, today we're talking about helping siblings adjust to new baby. So if you have any questions for Dr. Fasali as we go through our discussion here, go ahead and comment them in the chat box below. And also please leave a comment to be entered to win today's live giveaway. We are giving away a gift basket from the Boys Town Press and Boys Town National Training. So should have some fun things to include if you'd like to win. Okay, so let's jump in, right into these questions here. The first one is, how can parents prepare your older child or children before baby arrives? So thinking about be prepping baby beforehand, you know, the first thing is letting them know about the pregnancy and introducing that concept of new baby. So, you know, really there's no specific time frame as when we want to do that. However, it's really important for parents to try and let kids know when pregnancy starts to show. Yeah. Um, now, this might not be an option for families who are adopting or using surrogacy, but the important thing is just having the conversation early and introducing them. So it, um, by introducing them, that gives you a chance to prep early by reading board books, looking at picture books, you know, introducing the concept of being big brother or big sister um, and letting them know how a baby is going to be. So those books are really helpful to kind of talk about baby might be sleeping all the time or baby is going to require a lot of attention. So having those books can be really helpful. Um, the other thing is watching TV shows. So uh, one that is that comes to mind is Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. There's an episode about him meeting and learning about his baby sister, Maggie. So I think those are great things to sit down and watch with, with new uh, siblings. Um, the other thing I would recommend is kind of going through pictures yeah. and looking at when a big brother or big sister was a baby. And sometimes that can just be really fun to, right. to do as an activity together, but it's a great opportunity for kids to learn and realize that, hey, I was a baby at one time mm -hmm. and I needed that much attention before too. So giving them a chance to kind of think about those things and ask questions about what they were like. And, and that gives you an opportunity as a parent to talk about, so new baby is going to be just the same. New baby is going to require lots of time and attention. So those are just really good things to kind of prep early on yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, such an exciting time too. It is. So what tips do you have for when older kids meet their sibling for the first time? So first, I, it kind of back to that last question would be prepping. So it's really important for parents to prep big sister or big brother about the hospital stay. So, you know, if, at least for me um, and our family, my son had never been away from me and his dad. Yeah. So the hospital stay was the very first time we were ever away. So for a lot of kids, that might be the first time that they're away from mom and dad overnight or even for an extended period of time. So during that time, it's really letting them know who's going to take care of them, um, giving them a chance to know what's going to happen. And the most important thing is just reassuring them that mom and dad are coming back <laughs> and it's just a short stay. Uh, but then thinking about that, you know, that first time that they meet, it's going to be important important for their parents to remember that they haven't been gone from you. So when you get together, it's essentially a reunion for them. Yeah. So 
I recommend parents, you know, so let's say big brother or big sister is coming to visit in the hospital. I know that's a little bit different with COVID right now, so that might not be an option, but if sibling is going to the hospital or if mom and dad are bringing baby home, parents should be hands-free. So mm-hmm. that means not holding the baby. Um, again, so that, so that you can spend those first couple of minutes giving hugs, giving kisses, yeah. and kind of just checking in with big sibling and kind of checking in about, hey, how what, what were you doing? Uh, how are things going? And after that period of uh, time together, that's when introducing baby um, should come into play. So the, the big thing is just making sure that you spend some time mm-hmm. with big brother or big sister first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, making them feel special and important during such a big transition. Exactly. Definitely. So would you recommend, you know, during that moment, would you recommend buying a gift for the older sibling that is, you know, from the baby? So I think a lot of people might have different answers for yeah. this. Um, so there's, it's not going to hurt anything right. to give a gift to um, the sibling from baby. However, I would actually recommend parents buy a gift and say explicitly that it's from mom and dad. Okay. Uh, that would hold so much more meaning for a sibling who is going through a transition, who is not really sure of what's happening and how this new baby is going to impact them. So that gift from mom and dad is is really going to help kind of back to what you said of making them feel a little bit special. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody loves to buy baby things. Everybody loves to buy gifts for new baby. So this is just a chance for the sibling to not feel left out. So having a gift from mom and dad can be much more meaningful um, than it is from coming from baby. But again, not that it would hurt anything, but I would just say take it from mom and dad. Yeah, totally. So once baby's home, if older siblings have an interest in helping with caretaking activities, what are some age appropriate, you know, chores or to do's that big sibling can take on? Yeah. So depending on the age of the child, I would say that, you know, there are certain things that a little a little toddler could do versus an older child. So for little ones, it might just be something like just being around and grabbing a diaper out of um, a bin or, uh, you know, it could be as simple as, hey, here's outfit one, here's outfit two, which one should baby wear? So helping them just stay involved and helping along those lines. Um, the other thing would be, you know, when mom or dad, or whoever's feeding the baby, just having the older siblings sit side by side mm-hmm. can be really helpful and meaningful at that point in time too. Now, as baby gets a little bit older, some of the things that any child of any age would love to do um, and can be really helpful is giving them the job of entertaining baby. Yeah. So, you know, babies, when they're getting their diaper changed, they can start moving around and fussing a little bit. So big brother, big sister can be a great distraction. So having them make funny faces, have them sing songs that can be helpful and, and enjoyable for them too. Um, you know, speaking from experience, my, my, so I have a one-year-old daughter and a four-year-old son. And so as he was going through that transition, he kind of, he started singing to her and he caught on that she would stop crying every time he sang. Uh-huh. So he made up his own little song and that was just his thing. So that just made, he became, you know, the, the, the baby whisperer for his sister. Yeah. And so it was just something he enjoyed doing. So just giving them little tasks and activities like that can be helpful for them. Mm-hmm. And it totally makes them feel important. Like, oh, you guys couldn't get her to stop crying, but I can with my song, you know? So. You got it. That is exactly what he says. He uh, When she starts crying, he says, I'll take care of it, mom. Yeah. And then he'll start singing his own little song that he made. Oh, up. Precious. <laughs> So what should parents do if a toddler or young child is expressing feelings of jealousy or anger towards the baby? Or, you know, going back to if, you know, a mom is currently pregnant and the sibling's like, I'm not, I don't want it. Like, I'm not excited to have a new sibling. How can they kind of deal with those feelings? Yeah. So the the most important thing to remember is that that is actually really normal. It's certainly not fun and enjoyable as a parent to to hear 
those things. Like I don't want a new sibling. Uh, but it's again, it's pretty normal for that to be occurring. You know, I like to, to kind of have parents think about, you know, what if your spouse came home and said, you know what? I just love our relationship so much that I would love to bring another person to grow our family. Yeah. And I expect you to love this person unconditionally and just know that this is going to be awesome. And that's kind of where, you know, thinking about that, that's kind of where kids are coming from, where their relationship with mom and dad is the most important relationship that they have. So the introduction to a new baby is a sense of loss for them. It's almost yeah. like, like the, they're experiencing their first breakup yeah. in a way. And, and, and so it can be really difficult for them to handle those emotions. So it can come out as anger, it can come out as jealousy, and it might come out as even regression. So some kids might, you know, turn around and start acting like a young baby, or they might do things to mimic their baby sister or baby brother. And, and again, as frustrating as that it can be, we have to remember that that is totally normal. Right. And, and that is really a way for kids to communicate to you that, hey, we just need to spend a little bit more time with them. So the best way to handle that would be what we call time in. So spending a little bit more time with the older sibling, scheduling time just for them so it might just be a few minutes out of your day where you're sitting down reading a book or playing with special toys that they don't get very often so again the time and focus and attention is just on that baby or that's the older sibling so yeah the other things to kind of think about too is is just establishing some kind of ritual or routine a routine just for the sibling. So it might be something like as soon as we put baby sister down, that that's going to be our special time afterwards. So again, just kind of setting aside that time so that they know and it's predictable for them to say, hey, you know, whenever baby goes down, it's going to be special time for mm-hmm. me and mom or dad. Right. Yeah. And that can be something nice too for them to look forward to. So if Maybe you know, crying their head off, the older sibling can be like, well, you know, just a couple more hours and I, it'll be quiet. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah, and, you know, and part of that too, Gabby, is, is you know, when that happens, it's really important for parents to also just provide some of that validation, you know, yeah. and so just giving them some acknowledgement of, you know, gosh, I see that you are, are really angry right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you're really upset that we don't get to to play, but I can't wait to play with you as soon as yes. baby sister goes down. So again, letting them know that it's 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 okay to feel these things and it is hard and that you are recognizing it too. And and sometimes it's even helpful to just to talk about your own feelings and model that of, you know, I really don't like when baby sister is screaming too. I know it's really hard, it's really loud. And that might be a great opportunity for you to pull big sister or big brother aside and say, hey, you know what, let's go do something together while so that we can calm ourselves down while baby sister is crying and things like that. So again, just modeling all of that um, together can be really helpful so that they know that those feelings are totally okay, Mm -hmm. but how can we handle them? Yeah. And would you say, is it for a lot of kids, maybe like a phase? Does it hopefully pass. You know, I know parents are kind of looking for a light at the end of the tunnel with those behaviors. So. Yeah. So for the majority of kids, yes, it is an adjustment period and it's an adjustment period that, you know, so even if in the beginning they have a rough time and then things go really well, it's important to keep in mind that we might have those hiccups again later. So when we think about as baby grows, the demands on the older sibling are going to change as well. So I, I'm thinking about even for my son, he was great when um, baby sister came along, but as soon as baby sister started to be more mobile, started to get into his play or get his toys, you know, some of those difficulties kind of popped up again. And and the same recommendations, you know, for that time is again, just kind of boost the time in with, with older sibling. And again, those things will come up here and there but yes overall you know they're 
it is an adjustment period um, and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, if that isn't the case, you know, there are lots of things that we can do to yeah. kind of manage that. But overall, yes, you know, kids will kind of adjust just as fine as we will. Yeah, that's great to know. So on the other hand, oh, on the other hand, some children are totally disinterested in their new sibling and they don't engage with them at all. It's, I know some, I've heard like they're not even there for some kids. So, you know, is that normal? And should parents be encouraging older sibling to interact with baby more? Yeah, so that's that's totally normal. You know, again, thinking about it as this is a whole new person coming into the room. And so a lot of times kids just need a little bit of time to kind of observe and see what's happening, um, how mom's responding, how dad's responding, and just how baby is going to be. So so they might not seem interested, but they're paying attention. As, as much as we might not be able to pick up on some of those cues, they're watching and paying attention to a lot of those things. So you know, the, the biggest thing is to not force it or not push it. They will kind of come around on their own time. So when we think about those times that they are engaged, and coming in to interact with the baby. Those are the great times for parents to say, hey, I love seeing you play with baby. You know, nice job being really gentle. And so acknowledging and kind of helping them see that, hey, this isn't so bad to interact with with the baby. Yeah, that's great. So for everyone watching live, we do have just a few more questions on our end. So if you have a question on this topic, go ahead and comment it now so we can get it answered. And also make sure you've commented to enter today's giveaway. Okay, so how can parents manage their feelings of guilt or sadness when disrupting their child's routine. So, you know, let's say they're pregnant right now and they're just worried about how much this new baby's going to flip older siblings' world upside down. You know, how can they cope with that? Yeah, so I think that, you know, it's a totally normal feeling to have. And because again, as we're talking about how to help siblings adjust, we also have to remember that mom, this is adjustment for moms and dads too. Oh, yeah. So it's really normal to have those feelings of, of, of guilt um, and kind of worry about what's going to happen or change. And so it's just as important for parents to to remember and, remi and remind themselves that, you know, this is a phase. This is something that is going to be really challenging, um, but this is also an opportunity for your family to grow. And that is a good thing. And this is a chance for you as parent to teach the older sibling how to manage change in life. Um, you know, it's a skill that kids are going to need throughout their lives. So this yeah. is just an opportunity and a teaching moment to do that. And so um, just again, remembering that those feelings are are normal and it's okay to feel that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What can parents do if they just feel off during that transitional period from, you know, one to two kids or more? Is, is it normal to feel that way? Yeah, so, so it is normal to feel that way. You know, the, the concern would be more of if those feelings continue to persist. So that is when I would recommend seeking out help. Um, so, you know, moms have postpartum checkup visits. So typically that's about six to eight weeks after delivery. So that's a great time for moms to have a conversation with their OB or uh, provider about how they're feeling and kind of touching base. Now, it, sometimes that can be a little too late for, for some moms. So another opportunity or multiple opportunities are during the, um, the baby's well child uh, checkup. So in the first, in the beginning, uh, babies have lots of appointments with their pediatrician. And I know sometimes parents think, oh, you know, I'm here just to check on baby. It's really about the baby. But this is actually a really great time for moms and dads to actually bring up how they're feeling to the pediatrician as well, who can provide some support and resources. So um, again, it is normal to feel that way, but really thinking about, okay, if, we, if it continues and moms and dads are having a little bit of a harder time adjusting, um, it's a great time to seek some help and that's okay. Yeah. And tomorrow too, we are talking about postpartum self-care 
and getting into post postpartum depression a little bit more with Dr. Gillespie. So um, yeah, make sure perfect. to tune into that one too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then what tips do you have for kids that are going to share a bedroom eventually? So with any change, right, again, it's going to be giving them time to process that change. So, yeah, so thinking about just before that time comes, um, letting them know of what that's going to look like and, and thinking about all of the fun things that they might get to experience together, but also just kind of prepping them of, you know, hey, this is going to be your side of the room. This is um, your brother or sister side of the room and kind of just talking about what that might look like mm -hmm. on their day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so before we get into these questions in the comment section, I just had one more question for you, Dr. Fasali. What sure. other resources does Boyce Town or Boyce Town Pediatrics offer to help siblings adjust to new baby? Sure. So again, of course, meeting with your pediatrician there, um, but also here at our behavioral health clinic, we have therapists who are happy to kind of help that adjustment period. So thinking about meeting with someone who, you know, might need a little bit more help or thinking about, well, hey, we have an older sibling that is acting out a little bit more aggressively. So how can we help support that? And, and so uh, it's really important to to seek out that those additional supports and we have you know common sense parenting classes and things like that so all of those great tips and strategies are going to apply during this transition for the family mm -hmm. yeah that's great okay so looking into these comments here this is a really good question how do we help our two-year-old understand how to be gentle with the newborn such as grabbing baby's arm or laying on or near baby um, looking for advice on helping them understand when they're being too rough. Yeah, so so kids definitely don't have a concept of how strong they are. Yeah. So so it's pretty normal for that to happen. And and the the things for parents to do would be just model. So as so as big sister is doing that, you know, thinking about a tell, show, and do is kind of the way I like to think about it. So tell big sister, okay, use gentle hands, show. So maybe um, you might grab sister's hand and, and show her what gentle feels like, and then giving her an opportunity to do that on her own. Mm -hmm. And as soon as she does that, jumping in with great descriptive praise and letting her know, wow, that was such a nice job of using gentle hands. And so this is something that's going to happen over and over. So it's important for parents to continue providing those prompts and reminders. And again, you know, modeling that is going to be really, really helpful and providing all of that praise. And so the consistency is going to be really important as, as, as that happens. You know, it won't be something that siblings pick up on once or twice. It's something that you'll routinely have to model and, and show them. Yeah. Yeah. The next question. Oh, I can answer this one. We're looking for more information about the Boys Town Common Sense parenting classes. So I will link them in the comment section. But if you go ahead and follow the Boys Town Parenting Facebook page, we post a lot of information regarding our CSP classes there. And I also do monthly Facebook Lives on there with Bridget Barnes, who is the director for Boys Town Common Sense Parenting. And we talk every single third Thursday of the month at three on a different parenting topic. So I'll link those too so you can RSVP because they're always super popular topics. Yes. Awesome. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get into this giveaway. So, like I said, today we're giving in a we're giving away a gift basket from the Boys Town Press and Boys Town National Training. So, I'm going to spin my little wheel here. All right, looks like Donna R, you are our winner today. So, we will email you information in regards to claiming your prize. So, congratulations, and thanks to everyone who left a comment. So Dr. Fasali, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a super helpful topic that I know a lot of parents worry about when they're pregnant. 
Yeah, thanks for having me, Gabby. Of course. And for those watching tonight, make sure you tune in at 6 o'clock. We're going to have Amanda Petersmith, who is in APRN at Boys Town. She's going to be live with, or she's going to be on a video with the Omaha Healthy Kids Alliance. And they're going to be talking about sustainability sustainability, and maintaining a healthy home. So don't forget to miss, miss that. And then, like I said, tomorrow is our last Facebook Live of the Virtual Newborn Expo with Dr. Caitlin Gillespie on the topic of postpartum care for moms. So thank you so much for tuning in on this fine Saturday afternoon, and we appreciate you joining us throughout this week, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.